What's up, guys? Bloodshed here. Welcome to the Blood Hard Podcast, episode number 26. Today, we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. We got a little bit of uh, Diablo 3 news. Uh, we're going to talk about the Diablo 4 feedback from our new series and much, much more. So sit back and relax. First of all, how's your season going? I want to know in the comments in the YouTube section or tweet at me. Twitter.com slash bloodshed. My season's been going really well. I know I say that every week, but it's just been fun, man. We've been hugging it and playing with our group and just doing different comps and trying out new stuff. Um, like we've been doing um, barb speeds, but we've been maxing out physical damage, damage. So I was trying out like the heart slaughter. If you don't know, the heart slaughter is a two handed weapon and it gives you 30% physical damage. So we were doing like a heavy physical build, like, uh, you know, obviously on your bracers, you get physical, on the amulet, on your weapon now. I think we were up to like 90. Oh, and then with the Stone of Jordan, we tried it, and a COE. So we're going like heavy physical build just for fun, just trying new things. And it was working out pretty well, actually. I still like the original Messerschmitt version more, but it's just fun to try new things and all that stuff. I haven't started my Demon Hunter yet, but you know, the Barb, the Crusader, and my Necromancer are all pretty geared out. They still need a few more pieces each, but they're all pretty geared and ready to go. Probably do some solo pushing in a few days here. I think we broke 2100 Paragon, so that's a good thing. I really want to hit 3k this season as a goal. I'm going to hit 3k without going crazy, right? We just, we don't do no 14 hours a day, but hit 3k and um and then i'll do like a bunch of solo pushes and who knows we might have the the ptr by then we'll get into that as well my theories my tinfoil hat theories on the ptr so i made a new weekly show or i guess youtube series where i'm going to break down one aspect of diablo 4 on a video and then we're going to talk about it on the podcast one thing i learned from our itemization talk is it was better when we're talking about one thing a lot of the feedback is just multiple avenues and directions right and everybody's kind of everywhere but when we we're talking about itemization it was pretty much fully itemization talk in the description of the video and um it got a more in-depth conversation going so a weekly series and um i decided to go with world bosses this time around you can see the video here on the video version of the podcast, a video within a video. And I asked the question, do we like world bosses? I talked about a lot of different things like the stagger mechanic, does it add to the game, the camera, what kind of rewards should we get? And um, so I'm gonna read some of the top comments on the video during the podcast every week. So we're gonna get into that shortly. My overall sentiment was, I like the world bosses as long as they're done right and as long as it's balanced with everything as long as it's not better than speed farming like uh, dungeon keys you know as long as it's good just not overpowered right maybe put a cap on the items you can get put some cool items on them like crafting materials like once a day you can go do a world boss and get an end game crafting material or something like that so it's almost like a daily but not like a completely broken method of farming. You know, there's a lot of other games where you would farm the public events over and over. I don't really want to do that, but I do want that play style there. So if somebody wants to go from world boss to world boss and do that all day, I think that's cool, but it shouldn't be as effective as doing dungeons, for instance. I'll put the video in the description if you want to watch it. It's our first one in the series, and um, I, th I think it was a good video, and then we got a good comments in the description feel free to add yours blizzard's always listening and reading and watching and they want to make the game just as good as we do so yeah let's get into some of the comments here jack said about the boss fight if they can have some way to measure the players slash groups who have the most damage or the most cc they should get more rewards and better drops the counter should also reset if you die Ooh, that's a good one okay so the part I like about this is the counter should reset if you die, but then that might make people play a little too safe. Yeah, but yeah, that's kind of interesting though. I like the little trade-off there. 
And I feel like other games have done that before. I think Rift. There might have been some public MMO that I played where if you did more damage, you would get like the top tier rewards and so forth. Um, this could be good. Let me know what you guys think in the description, like a performance based thing and all that stuff. Um, I don't know how it would work with scaling. If somebody is like stronger than they, like the rich get richer kind of thing that that might be a little broken. But um, my in my video, I said that I think everybody, even if they just tag it, should get the same rewards, which doesn't sound fair from like a working man's perspective. But um, yeah, I wouldn't want boss, fight, boss fights to be too serious. But um, I'm not. Yeah, let me know what you guys think. This is probably one of the one of the things I could be like swayed on either way. Uh, I wouldn't mind if people leached and I also wouldn't mind a performance based reward system since I will be playing a lot of D4 and I'll probably do the top end of damage, right? Like anybody that plays a lot of the game will probably have good gear and all that stuff. So Necris said the same thing that Jack said in regards to scaling. I wish they did different levels from bronze, silver to gold, depending on participation. So it seems like a lot of people like it. So I might be swayed on this position because it does make more sense overall. Um, I guess the one thing that also is maybe like some kind of group buff system where like what if you're like a support, I mean, like what if you're a support class and, you know, you basically can't play that play style because you don't have enough participation, but then maybe they can factor in healing or shields given or I know Barbarian has a few support abilities already from D4. So there there might be more of those kind of play styles um, into D4, but we don't know for sure. It's just like an early alpha, right? He also said, in my experience with world bosses and events, from Guild Wars to Destiny, the same thing always happens. Once you progress past the area, you rarely return, and if in time you make a new character, there's no one to take part in the event. So I don't think this will happen with D4 since everything scales with you. So it'll always, you should always get the appropriate level rewards, kind of like the new World of Warcraft leveling system. Yeah, everything's like open world and scales. So I don't think there'll be like a low level zone. From um, I talked to the devs at BlizzCon, everything should be basically like on the same level except for one zone, like the end game zone. Um, but it should be basically the same level. So, like the way I understood it was like the whole game is T15, and then there's one zone that's T16. It doesn't make the T15 zone irrelevant, but um, they just wanted to block you off from one area. I'm sure it's just like a Lilith area or Diablo area or something like that. But most of the game, basically, it should be like end game content, right? So, and again, like it's early alpha, so that could change. Like, you know what I mean? Your concern could be true or um, everything could be balanced completely. We don't really know, but that that's good to talk about it now as they're developing it. Ian said, the only thing I don't like from a lore perspective is that it's weird that we need like 10 people to kill an open boss, an open world boss. Meanwhile, I'll solo the end game boss. It's more of an immersion issue than actual gameplay. Okay, so this is a good question. Um, a lot of people were actually saying this, that it's kind of weird that it takes a whole team of people to kill some weird end game boss, but then I can go 1v1 Diablo. At the end of the game or Lilith or whoever the end game boss is Rothma I don't know uh, this is a good this is a good lore perspective call out the only thing that we talked we talked about this on stream because I thought it was a really good comment um, the only thing I would say is that you know it's like uh, making a death knight in World of Warcraft you can go back and make one even though like that part is already gone like Arthas isn't there anymore so you played through the game, and at the time, you would have needed 10 people to kill the world boss. And then you're continuing on your journey, and by the time you get to end game and fight Diablo, you're strong enough to take him on by yourself. Right? So, technically, so you shouldn't go back. It's like time is like linear, you know? But since you can go back and do the world boss again, then you need the people again. You know, it's almost like going back in time, almost like a time walking event. So I don't know if that makes sense, right? So on your journey while leveling, you're going to need the people. And then by the time you hit the last boss and beat the game, 
and like if you if you killed Lilith or Diablo and stopped playing, then you wouldn't have any immersion issues. But since we are gonna go back and farm world bosses, because you know we're end game players and we do the season and we're farming, then yeah, then it's kind of weird. But but in terms of a linear story, it makes sense. But going back, it is kind of weird. So I get it, and that's the only thing we could come up with on stream. So yeah, but it is kind of weird. I do agree, Ian. Jose says, bosses, I think, should have two things. The first is to have different behaviors when the HP goes down by X amount, which is that I think that's cool. That's like Monster Hunter. I did talk about that in my video. This can be done with multiple health bars like they do in Dragon's Dogma. The second is the stagger bar. They can do as many things. They can do many things with this, but the boss should change behavior depending on if we fail to lower the bar or if we fail to break the claw for this boss or if we break it. The more changes to the boss's behavior, the more interesting the fights will be. A hundred percent agree that um, I like the progression in my own knowledge in the game, and a new player would walk into a boss fight not knowing what's going to happen, and me, a veteran, will know if we break the claw, if we don't break the claw, if we fail to stagger him, what will that do? You know, um, if we're not attacking the boss, will he attack us like a reverse taunt? And, you know, all these little things are almost like your own mental progression in a game and your experience makes you better. And um, that does separate veterans from new players. And it, it just it's fun. I like that. I think I agree with all this stuff. I think more mechanics, um, situational mechanics would be amazing. And like, let's say let's say we're from 90. He's his stagger bars from 90 to 100 percent and we have like five seconds to get it there or something and then otherwise it resets completely you know like for from like 80 to 100 it's like the hot zone and we have to all attack the boss now otherwise the whole stagger ball will reset he'll shake it off or something you know or like 99 to 100 you know like some some kind of thing like that all little details would be would be really appreciated and um, make for more dynamic fights instead of just uh, tank and spank for sure one thing i liked about the demo like i said is it actually killed everyone on screen and i almost died myself i was the only one alive and i should have been dead i barely 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 survived it killed like i think seven or eight people with one swipe so it is pretty punishing at least on the demo um but m you know more complexity is always appreciated i wouldn't want it to be like world of warcraft level where you have to like know it otherwise you won't be able to complete it but it should be more complex in general. Just dynamic would be a better word for it. We have one more today. And remember, if I didn't pick your comment, I read them all. I appreciate them all. I just try to pick some diverse ones and um, all that stuff. I really do appreciate um, everyone in the community coming together and commenting and uh, all that stuff. Okay. So Singh says, I think Kane should be a world boss. Okay. Also, Blood, could you ask them how many world bosses we'll have when the game comes out, when you talk to them? I think there's one per zone. How many zones were there? I don't remember off the top of my head, like seven zones or something. Yeah, there's one, one main world boss per main zone. Or if they'll add new ones in expansions. As far as drops go, I would like if they dropped trophy heads that can give you buffs. So this is why I picked this comment, because it was pretty interesting. If they drop something, it can give you a buff. They already confirmed that there's going to be mount trophies and then the mount trophies will give you buffs like to your mount and um, maybe there'll be some kind of rare drop that drops from the world bosses and we'll need those to get some kind of buff system that might be cool you can put it on the season journey where you need like the head of every world boss for your season journey or once you get all seven you can combine them into a master head trophy thing or yeah you turn him into some vendor and then he gives you like a monster hunter trophy and then you can put that on your mount every season that'll be part of our part of our progression or something like that there's all kinds of stuff you could do you know each boss could have an individual buff that they give you or it could be like a world boss buff like um like with the head of anixia like when you turn in when you kill anixia right you get a world buff in the zone that kind of stuff maybe not like a zone wide buff but everybody who participated gets like a buff for like an hour It'd give me something like not broken um i'm trying to like think of something that wouldn't 
force you to have to do it, you know, because if you give like even 1% XP per hour, that might force us all to do it. Yeah, I don't know what you could give. Um, unless it lasted for the, the day or something. But then, uh, yeah, then once a day wouldn't be that big of a deal. And that would increase participation in the events. Like a previous comment said, like the old zones would be dead. So like if you're leveling in a zone, if you go kill the world boss one time, then you get a zone for 20, you get a buff for 24 hours that maybe increases the, the zone drops in that area by like 1% magic find or something. I kind of like reading these and just brainstorming on the podcast that way you guys can hear my initial thoughts and everything. Let us know in the video version or tweet me or in discord, you know, um, we have a blood brothers discord. You should be able to find it in my Twitch stream. Just type exclamation mark discord. You can click on the panel as well. Some amazing suggestions here and I can't wait for future episodes as we perfect the system and more and more people participate. And um, every week we'll tackle a different topic. I'm not sure what we're going to tackle next week. Let us know in the comments. Again, I keep saying that, but that's how I get my ideas too, is from you guys. <laughs> um, but there's all kinds of things we could do from character classes to mechanics. Um, we talked about itemization plenty already, but lore and just so many things we can kind of break down one by one and, and uh, dissect, right? So... That just about does it for the Diablo 4 talk. Let's jump into some Diablo 3 news. This is kind of crazy. But we were on stream and we were talking about the PTR and people are like, Yo, Blood, why are you talking about the PTR, man? Let me bring up the screen here. Why are you talking about the PTR, Blood? So let me tell you my thought process. We typically have been getting PTRs at about two months in. Seasons last three months. At about the two month mark, we've been getting the PTR. The PTR will run for about one week, sometimes like 10 days or two weeks, right? But it's typically a one week event. So that means that we come back after the PTR, we have one to three weeks left of the season, the season ends, right? And then non-season. So Blizzard confirmed that we are getting longer PTRs while we have these new sets. They're gonna rectify last season where they only gave us one week PTR and there was all kinds of bugs and exploits and everything, right? So they confirmed that we're getting longer PTRs like we had in the past, which means to me, a three week PTR. Like that's about the average of the old school PTRs. Like season 12 PTR was a month long. I believe season 16 was about three weeks. So I'm thinking it's around three weeks. So where are they gonna add these two extra weeks? If we have two more weeks to add, is it going to be at the two month mark again? Like the two to three months? Is that whole month going to be a PTR? And then it's going to extend the season start time because they have to submit the patch to all the different platforms and everything. Or is it going to be earlier? So I think it's going to be earlier. I wouldn't be surprised if we got the PTR in the one and a half month territory which is not too long from now people think i'm crazy but they have to fit this time in somewhere we normally get it at the two month mark maybe the two month and one week is what we normally get it and then if you minus three weeks from that the start date would be at about the month and a half mark which is not too long which is soon right that would be like the first week of january so i predict we'll get the ptr the first or second week of january which is not too far from actually maybe the first week yeah or maybe the end of the end of december seems crazy because it is a holiday if it wasn't a holiday i would say we get it the end of the month like it's already december 17th so i'd say they're the first what is that date what's the first tuesday of january the tuesday the second after new year's do you think bloodshed they're gonna give it to us maybe friday all right let's predict it's kind of a bold prediction huh Let's predict uh, Friday the 3rd we'll get the PTR. At the absolute latest, it'll be the Tuesday the 7th. Just as a prediction, okay? We'll leave it here on the podcast. We'll see how it goes. They have to fit these extra two weeks somewhere, whether it's going to be toward the month and a half or it's going to be toward the two and a half months. If they extend the PTR to almost the three-month mark of the season. The PTR always happens during the season. If you're new to Diablo, the PTR is a public test realm where we get to test next season's patch. 
and everything like that. So all the new goodies. We're going to get at least two new sets. My guess is we're going to get a wizard set and we're going to get a demon hunter set. I'm going to say the demon hunter is going to be chakram or elemental arrow and the wizard's going to be spectral blade, but I think it's going to be hydra. So spectral blade hydra for wizard. I can't wait to test these sets. You can see I'm already planning for the future. I can't wait, chat. Matthew, uh, the game producer on D3, has been going crazy. And the, the Dainty has been going crazy. Nevalistus has been going crazy. The, lots of blue posts, right? And we love the communication. So I'm going to, on the podcast, always go through and tell you the most important blue posts of the week. Um, we love the communication, but it is hard to shift through because we're getting so many lately. So they did, they did kind of fix the group bug. It does work. You just have to log out, switch to your non-season character, and switch back. That's not really fixing it. It's like a band-aid fix, but it, it does work at least. We haven't had problems grouping in a while. But he did say that he wanted to follow up. We weren't ghosting on communication. We're continuing to work with folks around the company to nail down a fix for the, the issue, the presence issue. We should have another update on Wednesday this week. So that is tomorrow. So that's awesome. So there might be a, yet another fix for this group bug that's been super annoying. So thank you for the feedback. It's good to know that there's things happening, working in the background to fix our damn game, right? <laughs> so we already know about the Demon Hunter buffs are coming um, in the future. It could be next season. It could be season 20, right? They did put a blue post saying that Demon Hunter buffs are... Demon Hunter's getting looked at since it's one of the lowest performing solo push classes. And they basically confirmed it. It was a blue post, right? Not only are we getting that, they confirmed this bad boy right here. Um, we'll be taking a look at all the sets. All the sets. That's huge. That could be what Trigool, Raymond and balancing as we go throughout the patches. So patches is plural, it doesn't mean next time. But he goes on to say, I'm sure we'll hit Yuliana's and make sure it's in line. So that's beautiful, man. We love balance and it brings new play styles or old play styles back into the fray. Things like um, Death Nova Necromancer, really fun to play, but not utilized, should get buffed. Yo, shout out to Yuliana's. I love Yuliana's. I played it on Hardcore last season, one of my favorite play styles. Things like LTK. There's so many non-meta builds that are really fun, and I'd love to see them all buffed. I, that's another video, another topic for another time. Maybe next week we'll go through all the stuff that should get buffed. But uh, let me make a note so I don't forget, right? <laughs> and there was a giant read-up, mock-up on anti-cheating so just don't cheat man there was an exploit which we don't want to get into that's fixed now and you, you everyone knows what they're doing when you're cheating in a game you know and you're playing monopoly and you're you're sneaking pink 50s from the bank like you know all right just because you can do it doesn't mean you should uh, third party add-ons of any kind are strictly prohibited any kind of botting software falls directly under clear violation of our terms of service. So people have been getting banned. People getting banned. People have been getting banned on Twitch. Um, people have told me they're getting warnings from Blizzard for using macros. Macros are also illegal. Do not use macros or any kind of third party programs. Just don't do it. It's not worth your account. I mean, especially if you have like a, yeah. I mean, especially if you have like a, an account with like pre-order wings or some rare transmog, like you worked for all these stash bases, why jeopardize it and all that stuff. So I don't know. It seems crazy. We're working to resolve this issue as quickly as possible. Thank the community for bringing it to our attention, expressing your concerns thoughtfully and having the patience while we remain committed to our blizzard principles. Play nice, play fair and commit to quality. Thank you. So... Yeah, there's a huge post on the forums if you guys want to read it. I'll try to put links for everything in the description. Remember to include any D4 topics you want for the next video that we're going to do on the channel. Uh, remember to include any uh, D3 sets you want to see buffed. You know, we can probably include that next week on the podcast as well. Shout out to all the new patrons out there. I appreciate all the continuing patrons. You know, we never give shout outs to the 
people who continuing for their patronage. So thank you guys, man. It means a lot. If you want to support the podcast, you can leave a comment on the video. You can rate the podcast, whatever you watch it on, whether that's Apple, Spotify, all that stuff adds up in the algorithm. Like the video, share it with a friend that likes D3 or even if they just like uh, ASMR <laughs> voices, I don't know. Oh, the Darkening of Tristram is coming back. If you guys don't know what it is, it's a yearly event. It's our only proper yearly event. It's on the launcher. If you're looking at my launcher and you're wondering why does your launcher look different, Blood? Um, in the top left corner, there's a drop down menu. And you on your launcher, right? The top left, the top left corner, you scroll all the way down, there's a beta version. I'm on the beta version of the launcher. And there's a write-up telling you on your launcher about the Darkening of Tristram. There's exclusive rewards, all kinds of stuff. It's a Diablo 1 event built into Diablo 3. We do a yearly playthrough. Here's some of the rewards you can get on screen. We do a yearly playthrough of it on Hardcore. So I will do that in January. That's in a couple weeks. I hope it's not the same day as the PTR. This actually launches, I believe, on January 3rd. The pre-event starts on the 1st, but the pre-event you don't even have to worry about. They like drop pages for an achievement. So I guess if you want one of these portraits, you need the pages for the achievement. So there's lots of videos online over the years about that. It's called The Darkening of Tristram. It's really fun. Yeah, and we play through it on Hardcore, so look forward to that. If you think, uh, if you have an idea of what character I should play on The Darkening of Tristram, let me know. I think we did Monk last year and Barb uh, the year before that. I'm going to have to pick a different class for that. Pet classes are way too easy. So no, no Necro and no Witch Doctor. The pet classes actually obliterate the event for whatever reason. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for always supporting. New merchandise in the description if you want to check that out. I'll be live today on Twitch as well. This is the Bobo Bobo Bo Bloodshed and I'm out of here. Peace.